Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sanctuary Zoom service. I'm Beth Fega, one of the staff here at Sanctuary, here at Sanctuary, here at my home. <laughs> We're yeah. going to pretend we're all together in our building this morning. I was uh, laying in bed last night thinking about the things that I miss most being in sort of self-isolation. We're going on week six now. Um, and honestly, standing inside the church doors and greeting you all is probably the biggest thing I miss. So um, scrolling through here is the best I can do. It's the best option I have right now. But I just want you to know, like, I love seeing all your faces. So this is actually a hard Sunday morning to be talking because I want to be scrolling through and chatting with all of you or texting with all of you this morning. So just bear with me. I'm, I'm helping to host this morning, so I won't be on chatting quite as much as I was last week. Um, you guys all know this, but we're going to share it. We are community that makes space for every race, ethnicity, age, orientation, and gender identity. We welcome belief and doubt, devotion and exploration, while hoping to connect with God, one another, and our world as we do life together. So just like on Sunday mornings, I have a few announcements that we're gonna go through. The chat window is open. Um, if you don't know where the chat window is, go to the bottom of your screen and there should be a little um, icon that says chat. Click on that and it'll open it up. Um, we'll be using the chat window to post several links, so make sure to check that out. Um, speaking of the chat window, we're going to share a worship playlist right now. If you're a visitor or new to Sanctuary, we want to say a special welcome to you this morning. Um, we'd love to know who you are and how you found us. Um, so we're going to also post a newcomer connection form on the chat window. Super short and easy to fill out. That's another thing I miss about Sunday mornings is I would get to meet you in person. So this is the next best thing we can do. If you fill that out, I will email with you. We'll at least get to know each other that way. So if you would take a minute and just fill that out, that would be wonderful. And a reminder to check out the Kids Wing blog on Sanctuary's website. We have lots of specific content there for kids. It's really great. If you have not checked it out and you have kids, I would highly recommend it. Well worth your time. And who doesn't have a lot of time right now? Um, a few other announcements. We are pleased to announce that we have launched a COVID-19 response fund. We're accepting donations for this fund. And 100% of the money we collect will go towards sanctuary support of those impacted uh, by COVID. We have an emergency assistance fund for individuals and families. We're also giving thousands of dollars to nonprofit orgs um, which are facing critical need. You may already be giving to those in need. We know many of you actually probably are, which is awesome. Um, it's, if we collect, collectively do this, it really makes an impact. So for a church to decide together that we're going to support um, organizations, it just means a lot to the broader community. So we would ask that you'd please consider giving to that fund. Uh, you can find all the ways to give on our website. Actually, if you just go to the website, click on the give link at the top of the page, you'll go right to it. Um, additionally, we're now using text messaging, as many of you probably received this morning, to send Zoom information and other updates. You can sign up on the link in the chat window right now um, to receive those text messages and stay connected. And finally, I just wanna give a plug for our online, our virtual small groups that we're doing. We're finding that these groups for a lot of people have been a lifeline. I know it's been a lifeline for me. I really love the connections that we've made um, doing these small groups. I know for some of you it might be a little harder, totally fine. But right now we have um, a few small groups that are meeting. They meet for about 30 to 40 minutes, so it's not terribly long. Um, we have a kind of, contemplative group that meets on Wednesday mornings. We also have an IP group, a manual prayer group that meets with 80 on Friday mornings. Um, Pam Larson and I are leading a thankful Thursdays on Thursday evenings and we have a group for parents who are home with their kids, which I think is every parent right now, um, that Leanna is leading. So you might check those out. You can find those on the website as well. And with that, we're gonna get right to our service this morning. First up, we're going to welcome Bobby Outerson Murphy, our hands-on faith coordinator, for some HOP updates. Hi, everyone. Uh, so a quick 
update. Uh, is everyone hearing me? Okay, good. All right. Because <laughs> I don't see my face on there, so it's all good. Um, well, a quick update about Cougar Chow. Uh, we dropped off the last of our food bags last week, and uh, we'll be donating the leftover food items to the North Liberty Community Pantry. Speaking of which, the food pantry is working to meet increased needs in the community, but they're short on volunteers. So if you'd like to help out, there's a post on Sanctuary's Facebook page with a link to sign up for a shift. Uh, we wanna say thank you to those who've already been serving there, as well as uh, those who are serving at other local food banks. Um, we're still going strong with our project to make personal protective equipment for local hospitals, Mercy and the University of Iowa. So far, we've made uh, 11 scrub caps, 269 face masks, 112 isolation gowns, and we even donated a couple of the official uh, N95 masks. Um, I'm so amazed by the generosity of those who've given us their time and the resources to help with this project, and so um, thank you all so much for that. Um, I did want to read something that one of the folks volunteering to sew shared with me about their experience. When COVID-19 began to get more serious in the US, I felt a need to help somehow. The last time I sewed was likely high school home ec class, but I thought I'd give it a try. I had my mom's sewing machine, so I brought it out and relearned how to use it. She had everything there in the sewing box organized, even scissors labeled and bobbins filled with matching colors of thread. For me, making masks has been a way to reconnect with my mom. She passed away suddenly just over 11 years ago. She sewed and knitted, usually for others. For example, she knitted prayer shawls for people who were in pain or grieving through her church. We miss her greatly. I think sewing masks is something my mom would have done in this situation. She would have prayed, loved her family, and served others. So others have shared similarly beautiful and meaningful stories about why they're helping to serve the needs of our community's medical professionals. If you'd like to help out too, you can email me at bobby at sanctuaryic.org. Thanks everyone. Thanks Bobby. It's really great to hear um, the ways that we're reaching out and serving our community. That was a fun story. Thanks for sharing it. Um, next up is James Tutson, one of our regular worship leaders, after which we'll transition to Tom and Aidy. Um, all yours, James. Yeah, are you gonna share screen there? Jesus. 
Jesus, oh for Jesus, all oh, the earth and that could ever hold to be. Jesus, um, we do need right now to surrender our hopes, ambitions, and plans to you. Uh, because for so many of us, they're all in disarray. Help us find that place of trusting you uh, with what's dear to us during this season. <clears throat> So I was struggling in my morning prayer practice this week with this thing called gratitude. It's a part of what I often try to do. My wife and I and our daughter often joins us too. We'll have a meditation time in the morning. And I will usually, as a part of that, try to remember something good, perceive how Jesus participated in or contributed to that and say thank you. But there was one morning in particular where I just kind of skipped over that and went straight to griping. I said, and it was about some of what the song is describing, just the freedom, ambitions, plans. It was about the constraints that I'm living under in life under COVID that I think many of us are experiencing. I was saying to Jesus, Jesus, I can't do right now what I want to do. I can't go where I want to go. I can't eat what I want to eat. I can't be with who I want to be with. I can't do the things that I'm made to do, right? And it wasn't like superficial or shallow, at least it wasn't all superficial or shallow. There are really basic aspects for, about what it means for me to be human right now that I cannot do. I cannot do socialness in the way that I'm made to do it. I cannot do my work this thing that I've invested in my life in developing. I cannot do my work in the way that I'm meant to do it. And I had a perception of Jesus close. And so I was just saying, Jesus, I don't know how you help with this. I don't know how you can empathize with me. And I felt in that moment of prayer, I felt Jesus 
I can only describe it as Jesus shooting back at me. So, you know, it meant that I had touched a chord with Jesus and that Jesus and I have the kind of relationship where he feels free shooting things back at me, which I took as a plus. But I felt Jesus shoot back at me. Well, you know, I became human, right? And I understood what Jesus meant, that Jesus inhabited a human body and that in inhabiting that human body, he inhabited the human system, like all the way. So I find that in life under COVID, the, the flow of interaction between myself and God, between myself and Jesus goes in one of two directions. The most well-traveled path is I come to God or I come to Jesus and I say, this is what I'm struggling with right now. I'm feeling anxious about this. I'm feeling constrained. Uh, I'm feeling troubled. Would you pay attention to me, perceive how I'm doing and help? And often Jesus does. Uh, Jesus will bring to me an experience of community or an insight through a text in the Bible or a story or a spiritual practice that addresses the need that I have and helps me. But sometimes, and I think this is what was going on in this particular prayer morning, sometimes the flow goes in the other direction. That what happens is not necessarily a help to something I'm troubled with, where God knows me better and, and, and fixes it, but we're in life under COVID, I perceive something of Jesus more because I can touch it now. I can know a little bit more about what life was like for Jesus. And that ends up deepening my friendship with Jesus. And so that's what it was like, like sort of instantly, but then it spilled out over the next couple of days. I had this awareness of, of the deep life of constraint that Jesus inhabited. So here's how Paul describes Jesus coming into the human community. This is a well-known passage from his letter to the Philippians. He's talking to, you know, he's writing to his listeners. Be of that mind in yourselves that was also in the anointed one, Jesus, who subsisting in God's form did not deem being on equal terms with God a thing to be grasped, but instead emptied himself, taking a slave's form, coming to be in a likeness of human beings and being found as a human being in shape, he reduced himself further, becoming obedient all the way to death and a death by a cross. So Jesus as God, emptying himself of the power, the appearance, the glory, the, the goodness, just all of it, setting that aside and emptying and entering this thing called a human body and like actually doing it, living in a human body and in that human body going further and inhabiting our human systems, right? Which we all know are pretty awful. And Jesus does that. I then, you know, you then begin to see all the different moments in time where he is wrestling with the constraint of that. He has this conversation on a mountaintop with Moses and Elijah and God, and they're all unveiled. And it's amazing conversation that's insightful and passionate and hopeful and faithful. And he comes down the mountain to the chaos of humanity. It's just a mess of confusion and anxiety and faithlessness. And Jesus oh, how much longer must I be with this faithless and perverse generation? And you watch him in the conversations of his last week of life, where he interacts again and again with these puffed up, arrogant men, one by one asking Jesus questions, thinking they know what's going on, whole groups and assemblies of them thinking that they have the power and the insight and the wisdom and the control. And Jesus, you feel him like seething as he inhabits the constraint that he chooses to inhabit. There's this moment uh, in, in the Gospel of Luke where Jesus is in the midst of a, a series of conversations that are just characterized by disarray and confusion and self-absorption and hypocrisy and just a mess. And he he kind of blurts out, it's not a part of a story or anything else. He just blurts this out. This is from um, Luke chapter 12. <laughs> I came to fling fire upon the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism in which to be immersed. 
and how hard pressed and stressed I am till it is accomplished. Oh, you just feel Jesus looking at humanity and knowing I could fix this in an instant. I could burn up everything that needs to be burned. I could make the wrong things right. I could take charge. But no, I have to, for the sake of the mission, be true to my constraints. I have to be immersed in this system all the way to letting it kill me. Right? <laughs> and this is what I came away with. Like, I kept encountering these experiences of Jesus and waiting for the aha moment where Jesus says, and here's how I did it. Here's how I made it through. Here's how I found serenity and equanimity and peacefulness. But that moment never came. I think Jesus, his prayer practices, his spiritual practices were super important to his being able to do what he did and to stay true to the mission. But I don't think he ever actually sort of felt good and at ease with the degree of constraint that he experienced. I think he always chafed. I think it required an effort of will on his part to do what he had to do in the constraint. It just never became easy. And so as I was interacting about this with Jesus, <laughs> you know, my first thought in that regard was kind of disappointment, like, well, okay, how does that help me? And I think what actually was the case is underneath it is, is I knew Jesus better and that was the help. Like for me, that was meaningful to perceive, oh Jesus, I get better what life was like for you. And if I have a friendship with you, that helps the friendship, that advances it. And it really does produce, the writer of the Hebrews says, He's suffered, you know, he has suffered as we've suffered. So that when we're tempted, when we experience the trials, we know he has gone through them with us, not in a way that diminishes ours, but in a way that just helps. I'm friends with Jesus more deeply. I wouldn't choose this way of getting there, but that's what happens. And it actually helps to know that as I'm going through my experience of constraint, Jesus has been through it before me and he's in it with me now. And so that's, if there's an encouragement, that again is just it, that as you and I experience these things that are troubling and disturbing and stressful and all of it, that we have a savior who has gone through the same thing. You can know he's not unfamiliar with what you're experiencing and that he experienced it profoundly and deeply, and that it was a struggle, but he is in it with you and with me. Amen. Amen. That was lovely. We're going to take a moment and do a reflection for those of you who are able to in your particular rooms of the house where you're joining us from. Um, and we're going to kind of do a little bit of what Tom did. So Tom felt something, he named it to Jesus, and then he waited on some kind of response from God. And so we're going to make that space for us to try it. I'm going to give you a moment to say, this is the thing that I'm feeling the most right now, or this is the thing that I want to name. For Tom, it was constraint. Um, it might be worry, it might be going crazy, it might be disappointment from all those things that aren't happening, whatever it is. This is the thing that I'm feeling now and I want you to be in it with me, Jesus. And then we're gonna take a moment of silence um, and see, is there some, some response from God to you in whatever way um, you perceive or hear God. Is everybody good? Okay, so we're just going to take a moment of silence right now, and all you're going to do is to say, this is the thing that I'm feeling or wrestling with or want to bring to you right now, and we'll just take a few seconds to do that.
And for those of you who can, invite God, invite Jesus to say back to you whatever it is that God might want to say. For Tom, it was an insight. It was, wait a minute, I do know a little something about this. But it might be just, oh, I hear you. It could be anything. So we're just going to give God a moment to speak. Amen. Thanks, Tom and Adie. We're gonna jump over to James for one more song. I find you in the seeking, Lord. I find you in the doubt. And to know you is to love you. And to know so little outside you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. You, Lord, I find you in the morning, Lord, I seek you every day. Let my life before your glory, woven in the threads of grace, I need you, oh, how I need you, oh, how I need you. Oh, how I need you. Oh, 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 Like glorious light, I will go and shine. Break the dawn, crack the skies, make the way right before me. In your light, I will find all I need. All I need is you. Like glorious light, I will go and shine. Break the dawn, crack the skies, make the way bright before me. In your light, I will find all I need. All I need is you. Light, glorious light, I will go and shine. Break the dawn, crack the skies, make the way bright before me. In your light, I will find all I need, all I need is you. Oh, how I need 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 you. We need you, oh God. <laughs> We need you so much. We always need you. Sometimes we are more aware of how much we need you. We cry out to you, O oh God. 
be with us. Let us know you, be with us in our constraints, in our heavy heartedness, in our disappointment, in the stress that is life in COVID. We need you, oh God. We love you, oh God. We lift up your name, oh God, above every other name. Blessed be your name. Amen. Amen. That concludes our service this morning. Thanks, everybody. We will unmute. So anybody who wants to can stick around and say hello.